Hi everyone and welcome back to Sit and Knit for a Bit with Arne and Carlos. Sit and Knit for a Bit on a Sunday yes. with Arne and Carlos <laughs> and we are true. as always your hosts Arne and Carlos. And Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy Happy New Year! <laughs> yes. Did you, did you forget about I that? I forgot totally about <laughs> it. Anyway, we are back to our regular schedule and actually we started sitting it for a bit on a Sunday um, towards the end of last year. I think it was in October or yeah, in October. Yeah, so we haven't actually made it a routine. But uh, if you uh, were following us last year, you'll know that we're doing now every other week a sit in it for a bit on a Sunday, which is our podcast. And then every other week, we're following that up with a tutorial or a fun episode. And you have to mention that if you tune into this one and you think it's a knitting podcast, that you're going to see us sit and knit for a bit. We're we'll only talk about knitting. <laughs> you are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, we just talk about something while yeah. you knit or crochet or do whatever you want. Yeah. Because... Exactly. So I just remember you had this comment. There was a lady who she was so disappointed. She yeah. thought it was a knitting knitting podcast and there was two guys talking about the fridge that didn't work or yeah something. and then she wrote bye and then bye. apparently so she left and probably just never say it now so you don't spend yeah. your time wasting yeah. time listening to us talking about knitting, knitting so it's sitting it yeah exactly <laughs> it's sitting it for a bit because you are sitting and knitting for a bit while we are recapping things that happen around here. We've been doing this podcast since the pandemic. So um, that's why we forget to say these things sometimes. Yeah. Because we're so used to it. We're so used to it now. But we started doing this podcast in the pandemic when people were all sitting and knitting at home. And we've just continued by popular demand because we do have a very faithful following every week. Uh, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of people that want to listen to us and our shenanigans. I want to know what's going on in the middle of nowhere. In Norway, in where Norway. we come from. <laughs> and yes, we are knitting designers. We have been working as professional designers for a very long time, um, over 20 years. We're going to reveal it a little bit later because we did have a contest um, that we're going to you know, mm -hmm. uh, talk about towards the end of the po podcast. And yes, yeah, so we are professional, we are designers, and we do knit and crochet, but we don't necessarily only talk about that. But you guys do. Pull up your comfy chair, grab your hot <laughs> drink in your favorite cup. Here we've got our I Love SACFAB. <laughs> SACFAB is our acronym for sit in it for a bit. And it ends with FAB. Anything that ends with FAB is it's great. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. Yeah. And yeah, are we ready to start the first uh, podcast we of the are. new year? And what what can we talk about, Carlos? Since we live in the middle of nowhere. Well, there's always there's something, always something happening. that happens. We and have a we have some great <laughs> stories for you, especially the most bizarre New Year's Day we've ever spent. And this is ever. So strange. Uh, but let's go back a little bit. So, um, as I was saying, this is the first sit in it for a bit this year mm -hmm. and all of december we had our advent calendar uh here on our youtube channel which was the daily uh, knit along the stocking along mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun and uh a lot of people joined in as well yeah, that was fun to see on instagram yeah I, i'm watching on instagram it was a lot of fun seeing I all the stockings the being revealed um if you weren't following the knit along um and you want to recap on that so we did a stocking a christmas stocking and every day we revealed six rows until the 24th. The 24th was just the ribbing and and, and that's it. And uh, yeah, we've seen a lot of beautiful, <laughs> beautiful stockings. And uh, we named the stocking. I mean, it was a surprise. Nobody knew what the stocking was going to look like until the end. And the main motif on the stocking is the children uh, who dance around the tree, which is a tradition from um, Scandinavia. You dance around the tree holding hands. And that was the main motif. So we called it the children dance around the trees, Christmas stocking for 2023, which is a very <laughs> clumsy name, I guess. But that's the motif of the stocking. So now you know. Yeah. And we had this competition. And today we are going to use a random um, number generator and a random comment selector mm -hmm. to uh, select two lucky winners, one from uh, the December 1st to 12th 
podcast and then one for the 12th, the 13th to the, the 24th, sorry. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to using that because you never know, maybe the comment that we pick is not the answer. Yeah. It can be something totally different mm -hmm. and that can be very fun actually. Yeah, it could be a lot of fun. So this but can take time. It can, yeah. But you'll have to wait until the end of the podcast. Uh, we're going to devote the last 20 minutes of today's podcast for, to the winners of the competition and also the answers to the two questions. The questions... Uh, were um, so for December 1st to 12th the question was um, which year Arne and Carlos was established we are going to tell you that soon and from December 13th to 24th the question was um, when did we post which year did we post the first um, episode here on YouTube so there are two years that we're looking for not the dates but the years yes and uh, it will all be revealed in due time so we had a really uh, fun time doing the advent calendar. Yeah, that was nice. We had a lot of Christmas sp spirits. In November. In November. Yeah. It was Christmas here in November. When and we then... recorded it. And then we had, we were also in the middle of a kitchen renovation um, in November. Um, and we were without kitchen until the beginning of December. Mm -hmm. And then we had some, uh, you know, issues because things never finish on time, do they? No. Definitely. No. So uh, the kitchen wasn't ready until the 19th of December, although we could cook and we could wash, you know, dishes and use the dishwasher already on December 1st. Yeah. So, um, and then um, on, the, on the 19th, finally, the kitchen was done, except for a few bits and bobs that were really not important. But, you know, it never finishes on time, does it? Never. And then on the 21st of December, so two days after kitchen was done we went to Sweden yeah. so we left we left everything mm -hmm. and we left our kitchen and we went we left the winter and the Christmas yeah. mood in a way like the Norwegian one because yeah. we went down to Sweden and when we came to southern Sweden to southern Sweden and it was green and, yeah, it, and duh. one day it was raining and the other one day it was snowing but the snow went away yeah. very quick and then it was green again so yeah. it wasn't the most Christmassy no. time. The but... reason why we went to Sweden <laughs> was to celebrate it with my parents. My mother is, uh, unfortunately, she has Alzheimer's disease and she's not doing very well. She lives in a home and my dad's all alone um, in the house where my parents live. So the idea this year were, or last year was to go down and celebrate Christmas. It was going to be the first Christmas that my dad was going to be alone. Um, and so we spent half of the Christmas Eve with my mom mm. and my dad, and then the evening with my dad um, in his house. Um, and a lot of people have this idea that Scandinavia is all about um, winter, snow and polar bears. Uh, <laughs> and we have to de debunk these myths. Now, we don't really have polar bears in uh, Scandinavia at all. We don't. Uh, the only place where we have polar bears in Norway is in Svalbard. It's an island that is so far away from mainland Norway that, you know, I mean... But I have to say something because I, I you know, I bought this, I bought the pile of books from, uh, it's from early 1900s mm -hmm. and it's written, uh, from, it's a Danish guy who's written about the Nordic countries in the 16th century. Yeah. And in that book he says... You mean 17th? 16th century. 17th century. It's different in English. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Now, well... 1600s. 1600s, but 17th century. Yeah. yeah. It's either um, or. Okay. So back then. And then he said that uh, he write, he, he's Danish and he writes about the time when Denmark, Norway was one country. And he says that uh, in Norway, we have the big, the b brown bear. Mm -hmm. And then he writes, he, he writes about everything. Mm. But and no the, polar bears. And then he says, and then we have the white bear called the polar bear. Yeah, but where? And it comes from Greenland, but sometimes mm. it comes on ice flakes to the north of Norway. And in the book, it says that... Well, not anymore. I haven't, I haven't heard about that now. Never. But back then, it's like there was an island that outside of North Cape where they had polar bears stranded. And he also says that they sometimes they came on ice flakes or icebergs to Iceland. Yeah. yeah but that happened one time, I remember. But maybe it was colder back then. It was probably, yeah. Nowadays, uh, the polar bears, they stay in Svalbard. And Svalbard is an island that is located 850 miles from the North Pole. And to get from Tromsø, the northernmost uh, largest city in Norway, 
to Svalbard is a two hour flight. I mean, really, yeah, so or that's... one and a half hours. It's so far away. Uh, we don't have polar bears in Norway um, or Scandinavia. And we don't have eternal winter either. We have a beautiful summer here. Um, those of you who have watched our YouTube shorts have <laughs> seen- people said that? We don't have a summer? No, a, a lot of people have these beliefs. We don't have, we have, we have a beautiful summer in Scandinavia. It's not very warm, like in, like in, um, you know, Southern Europe, but it's wonderful temperatures, you know, 20, 25 degrees, uh, Maybe up to 30, up to 30, which More. is what 70 yeah. degrees, 80 degrees, uh, Fahrenheit. But right uh, now we're on the other side of yeah. the scale. And then, Minus. well, yeah. And then in the south of Sweden and the south of Norway and Denmark, um, they usually don't have much snow in the winter. Yeah. And if you live in the coast along the entire Norwegian coast, uh, both the south, south, south of the Arctic Circle and north of the Arctic Circle, you don't have very much snow either because of the Gulf Stream. The area that really brings a lot of snow in Norway is the area where we live because we live in the interior of Norway. We don't have the Gulf Stream because we don't have the coast. And we live in what is the most, uh, how do you say it, the most popular ski area. One of the most popular ski resorts in Norway is not very far away from here. Mm. So we live in a place, if, you were, if you're in North America, it would be equivalent of Vail in Colorado, something like that, right? Uh, where you have a very nice winter with a lot of snow and sun. If you were in Europe, we would be living in a place like Zermatt in Switzerland, uh, which is the same. You have beautiful winter and snow and all that. And the uh, Lille, Lillehammer Winter Olympics is just correct. Like one hour from where we live. Yeah, so that's where the Olympics hour. were. So, it's... so it kind of explains why we have a lot of snow here. Um, but where I grew up in southern Sweden, um, there was not much snow in winter. And whenever there was a snowstorm, I remember that everything shut down and we couldn't get to school. Yeah, and that's the buses what didn't now. go. And yeah. uh, my mom would come in and say, oh, you're off school today because, you know, there's a snowstorm. You know, that never happened. And it never I, happened. I mean, no, it, not, not when I ever I grew up. I, re I grew up. Okay, but... Because I'm from this area. Yeah, you're from this here. area, so you 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 know a lot of snow doesn't mean anything to mm -hmm, you. Nothing. But I remember this happening once. Yeah, you see, once. Yeah. In, I mean, I moved to Sweden when I was 13, and um, I was in in high school, in elementary school for three years, and then I went to high school for three years in in Sweden. And in those six years, <laughs> I think, if I'm not mistaken, one or maybe two times that uh, there was snow um, and that they closed everything down because of the chaos. Yeah. And that's it. So we, so if you think about us living in Norway, but living in a place like Vail in Colorado or Zermatt or St. Moritz in, in Switzerland, you kind of get an idea that not all our country is like that. We're very set up for uh, clearing uh, snow yeah. where we live. We have no problems. On the day that. there was chaos just now, right, just mm. a few days ago, because yeah. it was snowing a lot in the south of Norway, around and in Sweden, uh, Kristiansand, and down where your mm. parents live. Yeah. And everything stopped, and there was yeah. chaos everywhere. And that day they said on the radio, you should consider taking, you know, bringing with you food and some food, extra clothing, extra a shovel in your car. If you go out, <laughs> and we started car, laughing, and we were going to the grocery <laughs> store, and we were thinking, should we do this that? It's like, not uh, for us. It's like it can't yeah. be us. They talk about. They're not talking about us. <laughs> They're talking about the people in the <laughs> other areas. So we went. We we got in the car without food, without uh, extra <laughs> clothes, would look stupid. and without a shovel. And uh, we went grocery shopping. So, you know, we drove for half an hour. We went to buy our groceries. But it was very cold. This was unusual. It's cold, yeah. But our electric car works in the cold. Yeah. So we got to the supermarket. We did our uh, parking our car, uh, grocery, and then driving back and getting home like we always, yeah. always do. There was no need for a shovel, no need for any extra clothes, no need for water. But then I get an ex a text from my dad who is in southern Sweden. So we had just been there for uh, Christmas for four days and there was hardly any snow. And you could <laughs> see the grass, not really green, but brown. Well, I think and it was green for me. <laughs> no li leaves on the tree. So pretty much it looked, Sweden for Christmas looks like November where we live, right? And I get this text from my dad saying that it, there is a total chaos in the south of, of Sweden. And the E22, which is a highway, not very far away from where he lives, he said the E22 is closed and people have been um, up to four hours uh, stuck there. Mm. 
uh, without the cars moving. And then the day after, I get a new SMS from my dad, but then by then I've already heard it in the radio, that the trucks and the cars on the E22 in southern Sweden, they have now been uh, there for 17 hours. So people had to spend the night in their cars because there was so much snow and they couldn't cope with that. Hmm. And that would never happen here. No. So they definitely, yeah, if you live in southern Sweden or Denmark or southern Norway, bring a shovel, bring food <laughs> and bring an extra but it's, uh, jacket. I think it's, it's uh, the first time I've heard, ever heard that it's colder in Oslo than where we live yeah. because we are up in high up yeah. in the mountains. But this last days, it's been colder in Oslo. It's, it was, over 30 degrees somewhere in the woods around Oslo. Yeah. And we had 24. So and, this is and our good our, compared. our very good friends, they live in this beautiful apartment in Oslo. It's gorgeous. It's very big. It's beautiful. Um, but unlike our beautiful wooden house, their apartment is made of, um, of, of stone, right? Mm. So um, I was texting uh, our friend yesterday, how are you doing in the cold? She said, oh, it's very cozy. But we've had to close down uh, half the apartment because uh, it's so cold. So they were just using one living room, the kitchen and the bedroom. And they were under the sheets watching TV. Yeah. And they have one <laughs> fireplace. Yeah. One fireplace. Only one. So. Um, but yeah, they had to close down the apartment. And they said the floors were very cold. And we we live in, um, in, the, in, in the area with uh, all the snow in the winter. But we have a wooden house, we have a fireplace or a wood burning stove in We're every room. Prepared for everything. And we have underfloor heating that we bring from the lake outside. But so, maybe, Carlos, think about people who watched the, the pyjamas gardener this summer. If we mm -hmm. did some pyjama gardener videos this time of the year. Well, to start well, with, I wouldn't... Not in the pyjamas. No, but that, <laughs> that's what I would say. It could say. be fun, maybe, just to show the big difference. Yeah, There's not much gardening right now. Yeah, I will not be wearing my pyjamas no. <laughs> this time of the year. Freya, our dog, hardly wants to go out. <laughs> and then we need to carry her out so yeah. she can do her business because she don't want to go anywhere. But this time so. of the year, when it gets as cold as it is has been, uh, we can't go on walks with her. So we, we take her, we take her out, we let her do her business, and then we bring her in again because it's too cold. Yeah. Next week, temperatures are scheduled to go back to normal, uh, which means they will be down to somewhere around zero mm -hmm. Celsius, which is uh, our normal. And I don't understand... Up to 10 degrees maybe up here? Yeah, maybe on Thursday yeah. it's going to be zero, aren't it? So, so uh, that's, that's not cold no. this time of the year. So luckily we have a lot of knitwear, so we don't freeze. So let's see. And even Freya has her knitted sweaters, but when it's really cold, it doesn't help. She doesn't no. want to go out anyway. So, and also these little plastic shoes we put on her. That's yeah. So good. zero is about 30 Fahrenheit. And right now the temperature today, which is unusually cold, is actually not that bad. No, it's not 16. It's that's minus 16. That's not, that's normal. So that's probably like in Minnesota now. That's normal this time of the year. Yeah. Actually right. around 20 is also normal, 25. Yeah, but not the whole time. No, not for a long so time. So right now it's minus 16, which is actually not below freezing in Fahrenheit either. It's three degrees Fahrenheit plus. Um, but this is not the norm. I mean, we don't get cold like that all the time. Usually in winter, I would say the average temperature is around minus five. That would be the average. Yeah. And then we have these cold periods, periods yeah. which usually last like a week at a time. And we we had one in November and we're having one now. And we have a lot of sun, so like this morning, but it doesn't make it warmer because this morning I, I was out with Freya and it was minus 24 degrees mm. and then the sun came and then it was minus 27. Yeah. So it got colder when mm. the sun comes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, the winter. That's the winter. <laughs> and then we had some... So um, we got we got back. Yeah, and then we... We went to our friends to go skiing. Well, that's another one because we had two nights with our friends. So first my parents, yeah. we flew back to Norway to, from Copenhagen. We usually fly to Copenhagen and take the train to Sweden. That's the easiest way to get to them. And then we went to our friends in Trisil, which is a ski resort uh, <laughs> about three hours away from our ski resort. <laughs> and we had what, two nights and we had like one, one full day. And some of our friends decided to take us a walk. Like, but not the hosts, because the no, hosts uh, were a little bit ill. They had uh, a cold. But they do the cross-country skiing and there should be like 11 kilometers and we said fine that's good that's nothing and then we took off into the woods and six hours later 
And it took forever because our friends, they didn't know the, 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 the way. way. And we got lost. Mm -hmm. And it, my ski was going more backwards than forward. It was so hard. And yeah. there was... The landscape is flat. Boring. And it's like it's, a forest. It's more even if it's flat, it's more well, it wasn't, than down. It wasn't all that flat. Um, I like going in the end. I like taking my time. I, I yeah, really I, when we, then we went the wrong way, we had to turn and then it was just downhill. Yeah. But then we had struggle up that hill. So I went I was the last one, as I always am. I love being in the end. And I was skiing and it was really boring because it was this uphill like that for like an hour and you know uphill uphill and like when is this gonna end and then Never suddenly ends. i see i see arnett right in front of me and then i see one of our friends who was way ahead of us coming back i'm thinking oh he's just coming back to be some moral support to tell us that we've arrived <laughs> no, no and what he did was come to tell us that we have to turn around because we went the wrong way and luckily we brought our dundun mittens Down, yeah the down mittens is like a yeah. sleeping bag because it was kind of cold so we had knitted mittens and then the the dundun the mm. down and i think we came back to the cottage after dark yeah it was horrible it was a success it was a very boring <laughs> it was trip. a boring day <laughs> very boring. I, I, I think um I'm not bringing my skis next time. I think I've seen the woods. Been there, done that. I'm I've not going to bring any. It's flat, and there's, <laughs> yeah. you go into a wood, you come out, there's flat. Yeah. And you see the next wood, and you go into that one, and then you come out from that one, it's flat again. Yeah. Our area is much it's so better. so boring. Yeah, and our area is so much better. It's more up and down, and, and also we know when we walk around here, we know where we are. And we have a that very helps. comfortable house, so I mean, why would we go skiing somewhere else where we can ski here? <laughs> it's ridiculous, really. <laughs> so we're so over it. Yeah, so we left on the 27th, uh, <laughs> passed through a charging station to charge our car to get home, went into the bookstore. Arne bought this very interesting book. Have you read it already? I'm reading it. Yeah, I'm in line. I want to read it yeah. after you. It's a book about Edward Munch. Yeah, it's part one. It's a great artist here in Norway. Storm, Stormen. Mm -hmm. So it says st st the Storm, Stormen, number one. So yeah. there's more, probably more coming. But it's very interesting. This is about his first years as an artist yeah. in Oslo. And you may, know, uh, you may know Edvard Munch. Uh, he is one of the most uh, famous uh, artists in the world. And he has created one of the most iconic paintings, The Scream. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody knows <laughs> that's Munch. that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's a good book. And then I'm reading this book about the 17th century, which is yeah. the 16th century, yeah, which is uh, very interesting. I, I want you to finish the book on Munch so I can start reading it. I really want to read it. I'm so excited about reading that book. So, yeah. So we. we I'm, uh, I'm quick. So we spend a few days here and just relaxing um, with a very quiet New Year's Eve. It was very quiet, yeah. although we did have a few accidents. We broke a few things. Yeah, it was a very hard start. Yeah, and then... <laughs> and then, no, it started. No, New, New Year's Eve, we broke a... It started, you saw something. No, on New Year's Eve, I broke a coffee cup and we, we dropped a bottle from the fridge. Yeah, and it didn't break, but it spilled. Yeah, it was a little bit of a messy New Year's Eve. And we, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was... Um, we were just unlucky. I mean, it was early in the... We hadn't had anything to drink, so it's not the, bad. The next morning. But the next morning, we had a little uninvited guest. I think Arne uh, went to our archives to um, get something. Maybe I brought in some yarn from... Because I have yarn in boxes. In, in another house. Storage house. Yeah. And... Of course, there must be mice in there, and mm. and, and suddenly but it could also be the when we had the guy who came to put in the new fridge because sometimes yeah. the people who work with these things they leave the door open even yeah. in the cold, and we have a stack of wood outside, so, so I we know have mice will be happy to stay in that stack of wood. Mm. So if the door is open, they come into the house. Yeah, we have mice proofed our house. It's mice proof. <laughs> <laughs> with all the things that you add when you build a house and you know we've done it afterwards but we've added all the metal stuff that you shove in and but if it, the door is open yeah. in the winter or if i bring yarn back from the storage house and there's a little one who's hiding in between so things. early new year's e no early new year's day i'm minding my business and doing you know my stuff and suddenly i hear a sound you know like a that and i'm like <laughs> That's not Freya. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then I look and I see a mouse. 
a tiny little mouse running into the bathroom. <laughs> like that. Like I can hear the scream. It's and like, yeah. There's a mouse! I started screaming. Arna comes in. And, and we... it was not Magnus. It was not Magnus the, the mouse. mouse. No, this, not no. a knitted mouse. This was no, a real this one. This was a real one. Um, we closed both doors. <laughs> and we've sealed everything. The, the, the One of the doors to the bathroom has holes on the ground. And we Arna seals that with plastic. So now we have... On New Year's Eve at nine o'clock in the morning, we have a mouse <laughs> trapped in the bathroom. Yeah, and, and, and that was, and, and, we were, and we put in these traps for the mouse, and with peanut happened. butter, we tried peanut butter and chocolate, some chocolate yeah. thing, and then nothing and happened. And bacon, we tried bacon as well. We tried everything, and then I decided I put my camera in there. <laughs> So I yeah. went in and I wrapped the camera in plastic and I put the camera on the floor. So so here you here you have uh, here you have a mouse against two humans. Now what do the humans do? They put a camera. They take their phone and they put a camera in the bathroom to learn about the mice's behavior. The, the behavior and that, that was kind of interesting. I deleted the videos after a while. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, that's just kind of interesting to watch. watch so we saw the mouse. Uh, we saw she the was mouse. Thinking. Yeah, climbing the towels. Yeah, she was looking for a way out. Looking for a way out, climbing towels. You know, she couldn't climb up the washing machine because that's kind of slippery. Yeah. She couldn't walk, climb up the the toilet seat or the she, or the basin stand. No. But she could climb up towels. Everything wood, wood or wooden, and she jumps. Yeah. Quite she, a lot. I, she went up on the trash and then she jumped up to a, a cable, a cable uh, from a lamp and then yeah. she disappeared from the picture. So Arne and I go into the bathroom. Uh, I mean, just the thought of being locked in with a mouse in the bathroom. <laughs> it's undecided. Yeah, and we empty and, and then we see her hide under the washing machine. So oh, yeah. fine, she's under the washing machine. We know that. We know she's there. We saw her. So we emptied most of the bathroom. We remove towels i mean everything is going to be disinfected there was nothing don't worry. To hide in. we, we, we remove as much as we possibly can um and then uh, we start you know we wait we put the cap with the phone camera there again no mouse okay and now well, we would think oh she get out she has gotten out oh no arna said she's maybe hidden in a compartment under the washing machine yeah that's what i thought that was a bad i'm idea. not convinced and mm. i'm now at this point i am um i am very stressed i'm almost hysterical i say to arna i cannot sleep unless we demount the entire bed you i want us moving to a hotel i said to arna i'm moving to a hotel i cannot sleep in this place okay. arna humored me and we dismantled the entire bed the everything of the bed um, and I was looking with a flashlight to make sure there was nothing in the bed or in any areas of the bed. We looked for mouse poo in the entire bedroom. There was nothing. So I was feeling a little bit more reassured that there were no mice in the bedroom. So I go into the bathroom and I close the door and I have this stick with me now. And I'm like, I have to find this mouse. And at that time, there's almost nothing there. But our two very beautiful Japanese yukata robes that we got in Japan are hanging there because we forgot them. And I start doing this on the robe and then I see the mouse face sticking out of the robe on the top. Oh, poor little like, guy. I said, the mouse is there. And you know, she was probably in the sleeves, the yeah. pockets in the sleeves. So Arna comes with a... I a like a plastic bag and I wanted you to take the yukatas down from the hook and put them in. But the... I was so afraid. And he was afraid. So I took, <laughs> I had the plastic bag in one hand and I took the yukatas from the hook and put it in the bag, but then one of the sleeves was stuck up on the wall. So and the mouse of course the mouse was there. And then and she ran under up. the jumped and ran and hid under the washing machine. We've got our stick, lift the washing machine. Arne, we had from the renovation of the kitchen, so the old kitchen, we still had one of the waste bins with a with a lid on it, you know, one of those that flipped. Yes, yeah, so I put that on the floor with the, like sidewise with the the with a lid lid open yeah because i i there's nowhere to hide so she must run go in well, well nowhere to hide once you lift the washing machine and tilt no, so it we had to hold so we were chasing machine. this mouse with the stick <laughs> and eventually so we started this at nine in the morning we're talking about 10 in the evening now yeah, then, and the whole day <laughs> the whole day studying the mouse's behavior learning about the mice devising plans on how we're going to catch it and finally at around 10 in the evening, um, we're there with the, with the stick. I'm, you know, trying to get that mouse to run and it runs into the bin. And I 
and Arna closes, closes the, lid. the lid. Okay, now we've got the mouse. So we took her. We took her out. And poor little guy. And we walked to the mailbox because... Yeah. No, halfway to the mailbox. And, you know, and, and then we just... We opened the lid. Opened the lid and, so, and threw so her out. Threw her out. And then we were thinking, oh my... No, not the lid. We opened the lid yeah. and did this. And, and then the we were thinking, oh, we out. probably killed her now because... She came from the comfy bathroom with the very warm floor and nice yeah, temperature. and now she's and going into she shock. Jumped, and she just disappeared in the snow because yeah. <laughs> the, the, the tractor hadn't been there. Yeah. So I guess we, she probably died of the shock. Well, she, we threw her out and she had no place. She had no storage of food. I don't know. Anyway, it's not my problem. <laughs> the house is mouse-free uh, and New Year's Day was a very interesting, bizarre day. Nine in the morning, mouse discovered. 10.30 in the evening, mouse uh, is no longer in the house. Mm -hmm. And the time in between was only dealing with this mouse. And now you have a post-mouse stress disorder. Stress yes, disorder, I have. because you see mice everywhere. Well, you know, Freya, when she jumps up, comes out from the chair or something. I screamed the other day <laughs> when I heard mouse. I heard the some something jump and I scream. I turn around and it's Freya, the dog. So I'm not, it's yeah. getting better. So anyway, 10.30, we go back in. Uh, we wash the entire bathroom with chlorine. Um, and then we just start putting stuff in the washing machine and washing and washing and washing. Uh, disinfecting everything. It's never been so uh, it, it, Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and now I know that there's no more mice in the house because <laughs> there isn't. Um, and the bed, I checked the whole bed on him, humor me there. He said, you're stupid, but I said, no. Don't have to take it apart. And, look, and we put and it back it. together. It took an hour to take it apart, took an hour to put together. Um, and yeah, that was our New Year's Eve. And tomorrow or on Tuesday, We've got a guy coming. Yeah, he's like an expert on this. He has. So we, we will take. We will talk a little bit, and he will look through everything. Yeah, so. he, we have a con. We're gonna write a contract with the company who is gonna be making sure that we don't have issues like this in the future. We'll but, be coming in regularly to check. But what uh, if they tell us to move the stack of wood? That is not happening. Why? Because what, do you want to go somewhere like into the garage to pick up firewood? No, not really. No. Have to be quick when we open the door. You, you can't leave the door open. When yeah, it's we'll have to up. talk to him and we'll have to see what he says. Yeah. And we'll probably find a solution uh, one way or another. Um, we should have more snakes in the garden in the summer. In the summer, yeah, but... They're not around in the winter. I know. Anyway, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> and I can show, I, I've that's, been working. That's how we celebrate a new year, chasing mm -hmm. a mouse the whole day. And then I've been working. I've been crocheting the whole whole Christmas. I'm working on a new tablecloth. It's, it's long. Mm, it's like very it. pretty. I miss seven squares. So tomorrow I'm going to order more yarn. And this is just the base for something fabulous, Ooh. which I'm going to show later. Yeah. So this will be, this was um, actually a lot of work. I can imagine. And I think it will be nice. It will be great. So this is... And I see you have order, uh, doing, been doing some organizing here. Yeah, because I, bags. all the doll dresses I started on before Christmas, or well, not all of them, but some of them, I have now decided that they will... Uh, I just leave them a while, because I started to put on the blue beads, mm -hmm. and we don't have more blue beads. Oh, you're so right. So I'm going to take them out, and then there will be pink beads on mm. all of these flowers. But this is now just organized in the bag with uh, some other dresses because this is will be this will be my my what to say. This is will be something I will work on on the next cruises. Yeah. Maybe I bring them on the quilting cruise. Yeah, maybe. And yeah. maybe I just knit on the knitting cruise. Mm, yeah, we're doing. Um, if you don't know that, we usually do cruises um, here in beautiful Norway. We use the the government coastal routes. There's uh, two companies that um, that do the route, uh, and we work with both of them, Hurtigruten and Havila, mm -hmm. and we organize beautiful cruises along the Norwegian coast. We're going on one in um, February. Yeah. 
Uh, it's the North Cape Express. And on that one, I we love. Will I love that ship, the yeah. Trollfjord. That's very nice. It's yeah. so beautiful that ship. I love it, and uh, I love the crew as well. So we look forward to uh, to that. February is a great time for the Aurora Borealis, mm. um, the Northern Lights, which we get in Norway. Um, and nowadays, um, because the the Northern Lights they go in cycluses of eleven years. So uh, we're we're going towards the peak. The mm. peak is in twenty twenty six. You should get out tonight and look for it here because we had this. Yeah. So there's a ago. the Earth activity is quite uh, is quite active right now for the aurora. Um, so it's really great. Mm. Or sorry, not the Earth. The solar activity is very good. So the aurora is visible quite often um, when the skies are clear. Mm. And then we're doing a quilting and knitting cruise in March, which will be fun. I mean, we're doing a quilting and knitting in the sense that we're going to knit and quilt. And we're going to um, bring everything. Although although um, the majority of the people coming are quilters. I'm sure there's knitters too. Yeah. Um, and that will be in March in Havila, which is also, I love that ship too. Mm. And uh, again, the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights are still visible in, um, in March. They uh, are visible. Um, we've actually seen them here until April. Hmm. Uh, and then from April, you know, when you shift the clock in the end of March, the last Sunday of March, we go towards summertime and then it gets gradually lighter. And then we can't see the northern lights here until the um, until the fall again. So like in the beginning of September um, at the earliest. Maybe. Although I've heard rumors of late August in northern Norway. I don't believe that though. I, I think it's still too light. Mm. But yeah, you yeah you can't see the aurora in the, in, in the daylight. Mm. So in the summer we do have the northern light. Oh, sorry, the um, midnight sun here in Norway, which is the other thing. So we've got the aurora in winter and then the midnight sun in Norway, where the sun shines twenty four hours a day. And we're doing a cruise as well during yeah. the midnight sun. I'm going to show this one as well. Oh, this is the one I worked on when we were in Sweden. Yeah, that's this very is cute. her Christmas. <laughs> dress so it's very very fluffy yeah i just had to use all these you know I'm, I'm cleaning so i'm gonna have to use all these ruffles but i think i will try to dye this one pink mm, yeah because to get this away and there, this one is bleached and these are not bleached mm. and i didn't see it until i was finished so yeah. i will try to dye it it's and, very and pretty then I, have to, I love it i'm gonna make the hem by hand and yeah. the buttons, but this will also be on one of the cruises. She's getting we have so much to do now. She's getting one of those very cute Japanese kawaii looks. Yeah. I think, in my opinion, and all these dresses comes with a jacket. Yeah, very cute. That's why they don't have sleeves. Mm -hmm. So, yes, Carlos. Yeah, and then uh, uh, I recall you starting or showing a book, didn't you? Yeah, we just before Christmas I started a new scrapbook. And that was this one, mm. and now it looks like this. So quickly, huh? This is the first time I managed to almost finish a scrapbook just in a month, just a few yeah, weeks. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting is that we, or mainly you, you used to do your, your art journaling like this mm. uh, all the time uh, until the pandemic. And then during the pandemic, when we didn't go out anymore and didn't do anything, to... You stopped, and you stopped. and you actually stopped for a few years, yeah. and it wasn't until last year. But then I started again, and then last I had so year, much yeah. paper because there's still there's still place you can I can write in this one, but I can't glue more. I think mm. maybe I can. But do you have an one, exi exciting page to show? I, I found, you know, I found so much stuff on on my desk. So, oh, well, yeah. I think this is nice. This Surprise! Is... Huh? <laughs> Surprise, you have a lot of stuff on your desk. But I take this one, I take care of this, or keep this one, because this I can do, I can do coloring on the plane. Mm. This is... I don't think you've this seen... This is happy birthday to Carlos. Oh, I don't think you've seen your desk for at least five years, Arna. Oh no, I saw it just uh, half a year ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but and now I can't see it anymore. Mm. Um there are oh, this no what can I show? There there's so much in here. Yeah, it's a lot of nice things, yeah. So oh, this is an old crochet mm. blanket. I, I I keep these things. It's just a picture of a crochet thing. There's so much you can keep. Yeah, it's not oh I like that little Oh yeah, this is uh, from my genealogy. I did, didn't fill this no. out, but and this is not the old picture, I just make old pictures. I, I take 
photocopies yeah. of all you pictures. scan them and print them right scan them and print them and then i glue them on car on cardboard mm. so they look like they're old yeah but and it's nice to keep like this old fashioned pictures and this is the prim star that tells you the the mm. the prim calendar the prim yeah. calendar mm. things like this yeah Yes. Very nice. And then uh, we wanted to show you also that we got this book. Uh, as you all know, we love Dolly Parton. And we've got this book here that we wanted to recommend. It's absolutely beautiful. That it's came the, just before Christmas. Yeah, behind the scenes. So it's all about her clothing. And it's a really beautiful this is book. beautiful um, I've, table. I've almost not looked at most of it. But I have, I have a quick glance. And it is very inspiring. You've got a lot of details as well. Beautiful things. Um, There's some very nice pictures like close-ups. Yeah. Close yeah, like that one that I yep. showed. And um, uh, the Playboy Bunny dolly. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is very nice and like for... Doll clothes inspiration. You do, if you do doll clothes. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Ooh. Little crochet or is it knit? It's a crochet vest. Mm. Look at this one. Cute. So we no, highly... This is a good book. We highly recommend this book if you um, if you've been looking at it or thinking about it. It is absolutely worth getting. It's beautiful. Yeah, because you see, you have all these things, so you can see like close-ups of the sequence. Yeah, and we went to Nashville. We were in Nashville in 2022 in the fall, and we went to that museum of music. Uh, remember? Yeah. And we saw a few of her outfits there. I was disappointed. Up. But was yeah, it was so disappointing many. because it was, you know. I wanted more. We wanted to <laughs> see more of her clothes. We thought we'd, there'd be more there, but the book really makes up for everything. But it's called Dolly Parton Behind the Scenes My Life in, in rhinestones. rhinestones. So look it up and get it. It's, this is a good one. It's this, a good one. This go in the bookshelf with all the doll books. Mm. Yep. For inspiration. Okay, Arne, I think we are getting to a point where a lot of people are very anxious. Yeah, we have the 15 minutes is gone. Yeah. And we should... And they're, the waiting, they're waiting to find out whether they won the competition or yeah. not. First of all, we want to thank everybody who did the knit along uh, with us. It was a lot of fun revealing um, six rounds every day. And it was a lot of fun seeing you guys uh, knit those six rounds. And what delighted me the most was uh, seeing all the finished stockings that we've seen. Um, hundreds and hundreds on, on uh, social media. So um, we're very happy that a lot of a lot of you, maybe thousands of you, uh, completed the, the design uh, in time for Christmas. And that's very, very nice. Um, and as you all know, I mean, especially if you completed it, uh, six rounds a day was perfectly ach achievable. Yeah, that was nothing. It was nothing, really. <laughs> Um, some people we heard were struggling with the heel. Um, Actually, we're going to do a short uh, a video. We have filming. Is it next week? Yes. With Eric and Anna, they're coming, and we're I think we should yeah. do a new video. A new video on this on the heel. On the heel, like yeah. very like for new beginners. Yeah. Uh, to actually, I think that just like to, sh to show what is a a lifted increase and mm. explain the leg on the stitch because I think a lot of people. If they haven't knitted yeah. before, it can be hard to understand. And we had a lot of new beginners, I think, mm. attempting this. And uh, I think maybe some of them got a little bit upset that they weren't able to uh, get the heel right. I, you know, not upset, but frustrated. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do that. And hopefully that will help. Um, but so many people completed the design, mm. which is amazing. So uh, we're very, very happy to see that. Um, and we can say, we can easily declare that... Um, the 2023 uh, Arne and Carlos Christmas Knit Along was a huge success. Yeah. And we may consider doing it again um, maybe this year. Who You're knows? moving backwards. Oh, sorry. Who knows? We may consider doing it again <laughs> um, again this year yeah. uh, since it was such a success. So that's very nice. Now, uh, we had two competitions, two different competitions. Yeah. Um, the first competition, Arne, was uh, one that went from December 1st until December 12th. And um, that's the first competition that we're gonna look at. And we're gonna get a winner, a winner, pick yeah. a winner randomly. It's gonna be fun. Uh, and do you remember what the price was? I mean, we said that it 12 times. That was a yarn times. of your choice from Hillesvog, yeah. a Norwegian yarn company. 
so you can have yarn for a sweater. Yeah, so Hillesvog Ullevare Fabrik is uh, uh, our absolute favorite Norwegian yarn company. We love them so much. And it's, it's actually the oldest uh, yarn company, um, and they still have the same owners um, as they had. I mean, it's the, it's, it's the one company that has been run by the same family since it was created. And right now it's owned by the two brothers. Um, mm. And the dad, who's like 90 years old, he still goes into work every day. Uh, how is the plan now? Should they contact Hillsborough? The no, they'll contact or? us. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna select the winner. The winner is gonna contact Anna at estiw.com, and uh, we're gonna put that in the description as well. And then she will send uh, the um, the winner. Uh, well, we'll have a discussion with the winner about. Uh, what quality they yeah. want to choose because uh, it's actually any of the yarns uh, from their uh, catalog. So there's a lot of beautiful yarns and we may actually have to help out a little yeah. bit, uh, give some advice and some suggestions since we know the yarns very well. Um, my personal favorite is Vilja, mm -hmm. which is uh, the lamb's wool which is actually used uh, a lot for the folk costumes, stockings that the men wear. The reason why I like it so much is because it's very soft and comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes in a lot of great colors. And we use Ask, ask a We lot. use Ask a lot, a lot. because it's a, uh, both Vili and Ask are DK yarns. And Ask has an even greater color palette than Vilja. Mm -hmm. Vilja is actually a little harder to get. Uh, anyway, it's we will... Thin. It's thin. It's yeah. thinner. It's thinner, yeah. yeah. So we will uh, be here to help the winner, um, you know, give some advice as, as to what to select. And then um, we'll get the size and we'll calculate how much yarn they'll need. Um, and actually, we don't have a pattern for the sweater. So you, the winner has to figure that out themselves. But they'll get the yarn um, as much as they need mm. for the sweater. Okay? So pick one of ours. So... <laughs> Pick one of what? <laughs> we have some designs. Oh, we, yeah, maybe we, we should pick ourselves. No, uh, you know, you can do the one for Save the Children or... Oh, that's the, true. Yeah, a you could do... HDAD? ADHD. ADHD, you could do that, Save the Children. Yeah, yeah, there's several patterns yeah, that or we've done. anything. Yeah. And the other competition was... Uh, well, we'll get to that later. We'll oh, yeah, start, we'll start we, with this now one. Now we have to pick a winner. Pick okay, one so, um, who's the winner? so every day from December 1st to 12th, we ask the same question. And we ask for people to put the answer in the comments. So once we select a random day, and hopefully when we select a random comment, uh, the answer is right. Arne wants the answer to be wrong. Yeah, that's so really that funny. we can, yeah. No, but it, was, it, it could be something totally different. Mm. This can take forever. Yeah. Try, see what so, happens. So, but we should start by actually giving away the correct answer. So um, Arne, what was the first question? It was when was Arne and Carlos established? Or founded. Founded. Yes. And the cor um, this one is a little bit tricky. We didn't think <laughs> about it when we created the answer that there may be multiples, multiple answers. And after consideration, we have decided that we are going to um, allow both years uh, in the competition. So both are correct. And that's because the internet tell you a lot of different Well, no, things. no, no. I mean, it's or... basically, it depends how you look at things. Okay, so, yeah, that's another one, yeah. So the correct answer, Arne, the, the real answer, when was Arne and Carlos established? That was in 2020, no, 20... 21. One. No, sorry, 2001. 20, 2001. 2001. 2001. That's when Arne and Carlos was established in the sense that that is when we um, went to the the Brønnesund register office registered the company. and registered the company and decided that we were going to start the brand Arne and Carlos. That happened in 2001. And that is the answer that we, in our mind, had as the correct answer. However, it really depends on how you count because <laughs> which year did we show our first collection and become famous in Norway? 2002. 2002. 2002. And uh, when the National Museum um, made the exhibit on 10 years of Arne and Carlos, they chose 10 years from when our brand was launched. So that was in 11? 12. 12. Yeah. No, 12. Yeah. 12. So they, they counted the launch of our brand as 2002. Brand. Yeah. And so uh, 10 years with Arne and Carlos was in 2012. So the correct answer is uh, Arne and Carlos, the, uh, the name and the company was established in 2001, but the brand was launched in 2002. So we accept both. We are going to accept both. 
we're gonna be we're gonna be nice. Yeah, I pick a winner. Okay, you show how you pick a winner. So this is how we're gonna do it. Uh, so we have a uh, we have a number generator here. Um, it actually says four, but that's not. It, it's like that. I because don't know you why. You have to test it. No, no, no. It, it, it's been with the four there the whole time. Why? Anyway, yeah. we've got a number generator here, and as you can see, um, we're gonna pick a number from one to twelve. Okay. And it says for now, but forget it. That's not the correct. So when I, when Ari clicks the generate, it will bring a number. Okay, so click. Okay. Oh, well, that's seven. That was there. Great. We go. Number seven. seven. So we are going to select of December. We are going to select um, a comment from December seventh. If Let's, you type now, it's too late it's, because this is pre-recorded. Yes, yeah, it's pre-recorded. <laughs> don't type now because don't no, waste your time. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> okay, so December seventh. Here we are, but now it's not. Yeah, here it is. So what's going on now? Okay, of course when we do this. Okay, so I click share, and I copy the link. Okay, the link is now copied. Now I am gonna go to this. YouTube random comment picker and you can pick number seven and there. I'm gonna yeah I've I, I've uh, I've posted the URL URL link to episode seven which is now in there and then you need and another now number you're gonna click on fetch and then continue what happens now and it says please wait while we load the comments okay and it's loading and on December 7, uh, no. We, no, wait, 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 wait. On December 7, we had 391 comments. Yeah. And it says uh, pick, a, pick a winner. So click. Click. And the, oh, cool. Uh, I think maybe we have a Japanese winner. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, Yakimoto san. So, but, but, um, and the answer oh, is yeah, correct. The, the answer is, you can see the answer also. Yep. Yeah. So well, congratulations! It's Arne. <laughs> yeah. the, the random comment picker picks a random comment. Yeah, but what if the random comment was um, something totally different? Then we would have to pick it a new like, one. It was like, oh, love the dollhouse. Yeah, but it picked a comment with the right answer. So the winner of uh, this first, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually do this. The winner of our first uh, competition is Yakimoto San. And Yakimoto-san, you have won all the yarn you need to knit a sweater. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. We are going to write the name of the winner as well on the um, on the description down below and on our blog so that you um, that you can and uh, then contact you have us. To contact Anna. Yeah, and, and you have to contact Anna. And I'm writing down her email address as well in the down there, but it's also Anna A N N A at E S I T W dot com. So E S I T W dot com. Uh, and uh, congratulations, you are you're a winner, the lucky winner. <laughs> okay, and okay. then the the next competition. What 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 is it called? What you can win? What's the English name of that? Oh, that was the Vario Creative Tool. It's a var Vario Vario to punch and make rivets and. Stuff yeah. like that. If you want to have rivets on something. Yeah. So the tool from Prim, the Vario Creative tool with a lot of different accessories um, is the price from December 13 to 24. Uh, what was the question, Arne? Yeah, what was the okay, question? Okay, so the question, I remember it. The I, question I was, which year, did, did, which year did we post uh, oh, our first, first video, video on YouTube? And that's very easy to find out. There was only one answer. And all you need to do is you need to go to our videos and then you click on the oldest and it will have said eight month, eight years ago. And then when you clicked on the description, you would have seen the date, which was December, I think, 6. Mm -hmm. But that's not the, the correct answer. It's the year, which was? Yeah. 28. No. No, it's just 2008. No. No, 2000, the correct... 18. Okay. Eight. <laughs> I'm, 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 glad, I'm listening. I'm glad you didn't do the competition. You would lose big time. 2015 is the correct answer. <laughs> what? Oh, you said the 8. I'm, I'm what? so confused now. Okay. I didn't say the 8th. I said December 6th. Oh. And then I didn't say the year until I said <laughs> 2015. Oh, I'm getting warm. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm... I'm 
I really don't get it. Anyway, the correct answer is... I'm not a winner. <laughs> The correct answer is 2015. That is the yeah, first that's what I, episode that that's, we posted. That, that's what I so, was supposed to say. We've got a little, our, our little number generator. Um, it says number one on top, but ignore that. It's going to select um, an episode from the 13th to the 24th. Okay, so, so it's my turn. You press the button. Oh, it's going to select a comment from December 15. Or 15. There can't be a lot of comments on the so 15. So the correct answer, 2015, and we're selecting it from December 15. When you do this netalongs or this advent calendar, the viewer the, you, goes, yeah, it always, look if there are 15. Yeah, the viewer rate usually drops. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's the 15 is not the number of the comment. It's just the episode. The episode 15, but that's, that's almost Christmas. Yeah, so I'm gonna, cl I'm gonna click share so that I get the link. Right, so copy link, and then I'm going to go to the um, random comment picker, and I am going to paste the link there. Paste, so there you go. So the link is now pasted, and fetch. Let's see how many comments. Oh, that's oh. So two hundred and forty-two comments. So the See, late, the later you post, the later you post your comment on an a running advent calendar, the the higher the chances <laughs> to win because because uh, there's fewer and viewership fewer. drops. Yeah. It tends to drop. It's it's uh... so anyway. Two hundred and forty-two comments, and now we are going to pick a winner. Oh, this one also had uh, the yeah, right, it's right answer. YouTube video says two. Can't wait to knit this stocking when the yarn is back in stock. You've been making YouTube videos since 2015. Congratulations. Yeah, and the winner is CJ Kate. Kate. You're the winner. So um, let me just do this so you can see for yourself. So CJ Kate is the lucky winner of the Vario tool. Let me do that again so that we And are... you can just send us your address and yeah. then we will ship it because we have the tool here. Correct. So, so all you need to do and send it to you. So we've got CJ Cave and we've got uh, who was the other one again? Yakimoto san. Uh, you both win. You are the winners and uh, all you need to do now is contact Anna at E S night E S I T W E S I T W dot com. Yeah. So ESITW stands for the easiest sock in the world. <laughs> so yep. that, so That's Anna, Yakimoto-san. Yeah, well, both Yakimoto-san and CJ Cave. Both oh, yeah, of them. Have to contact yeah. there, maybe. Okay. Both of them have to contact Anna at ESITW dot com. The email address is also in the uh, address line below or in the description down below. Contact Anna and we will sort you out. Uh, don't expect to get your prices immediately. It's going to take some time, partly because the post is very slow nowadays and partly because we need to get the prices together and all that. So expect the prices in a few months time. But please contact Anna and uh, we are um, very happy that you won. So yeah. congratulations. congratulations. And to everybody else, thank you so much for participating. Yeah. And sorry you didn't win, but... There's always Maybe another time. time. Yeah. We we do run competitions every now and then. Every now and then. Yeah. So okay, yeah, Carl said it's getting dark. It's getting dark. Uh, I I fancy a cup of hot chocolate. I think we should have hot chocolate in front of the fireplace. That sounds like a plan. And maybe we should go out and dig some snow in the dark later on. Yeah, so that that we can nice. fall asleep easily. Yeah, because that's... the sky is clear, it will be very cold tonight, but yeah. we will have the stars and the moon and maybe the northern lights. Mm, you maybe never the know. Northern lights, yeah. So that's a great plan. It's a beautiful, yeah. clear day. So yeah, northern lights can happen tonight. It can happen. So yeah, we're going to be bundling up here in January at our home. And then February, we start traveling again, you know, knitting cruises and all, and all the things that we're going to do throughout the year. It's a very exciting year and we hope that you're all also going to have an exciting year filled with good news and good health and all of that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now um, we do hope that you have enjoyed the episode. If you have, 
put your thumbs up and if you're a subscriber put on the notifications because then you won't miss an episode and the email list is the best way uh, to keep in touch with us and to find out about our latest shenanigans yeah. so uh, go to our website anarnacarlos.com and sign up and um, if you're interested we do have a membership area here um, and uh, we've got three different tiers there's a supporter tier a tier one and a tier two and uh, members get additional content uh, once a month, uh, live streams, among other things, where you can get your knitting help uh, with anything you might need. You've got weekly updates with us called 15 Minutes with Arne and Carlos. Uh, two, two members also get cooking videos. <laughs> which is as this. Which as, is as this, but as as shorter. As, this is also 15 minutes. Yeah, but this is fake 15 minutes. And uh, <laughs> yeah. for the members, we do real 15 minutes. Fake in the sense that we always go... Oh, it's overboard an hour now yeah. yeah so yeah so members get additional content and if you're interested uh, just look at the subscribe button on our youtube channel and next to it there's a join button click on that and you can read about the perks and everything you get uh, additionally if you choose to become a member yeah so thank you so much for watching and see you next time in two weeks time bye, bye. take care actually in one week because next week we do a tutorial and then we'll come back with a yeah. new Sit in it for a bit. Bye. Bye. The week after. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.